Well, my name is Professor Dan Reinstein, and I am uh, medical director and founder of the London Vision Clinic in London, and I am very excited uh, to be coming to Brazil this year, to Sao Paulo, to the Brass Risk meeting. Uh, and um, of course, I'm going to talk about a variety of topics, um, including, for example, I'm going to talk about the Vizimax 800, update on SMILE, um, Vizimax 800, which has you know, hugely improved the workflow that we have in the operating room. Certainly the surgeon, surgeon experience has improved, uh, but the patient experience is, is greatly improved. And, you know, um, innovations such as, you know, automating the docking and centration and uh, cyclotorsion, um, not that it's changed the outcomes, but it's a lot less work for us to do those things during a spinal procedure than it used to be with manual drawings and printouts. The fact that the treatment time is just so much quicker that um, it makes certain complications probably um, um, uh, difficult to generate at this point, like suction loss, like eye movements during cutting, things like that. I'm also going to spend quite a bit of time talking about presbyopia in the absence of cataract and the treatment uh, modalities. Now, of course, you know, the ever-ending debate about cornea versus lens and multifocality versus EDOF and so-called EDOF um, that some companies are talking about. Um, and I want to, you know, I'm going to really spend some time making a very clear, complete scientific argument uh, with published literature and review to um, make everybody aware of the fact that corneal refractive surgery in the absence of cataract in the presence of um, obviously an ocular surface that's adequate for refractive surgery um, is really the best solution for presbyopia. Um, I'm going to make the argument scientifically and I look forward to debating that with anybody who disagrees with me because that's what these meetings are for. I will also be discussing um, something, uh, I've been asked to talk about nomogram development and the use of nomograms. This is something which technically should be part of every single refractive surgery practice. Um, usually these are done in people's heads and people sort of thumb it a little bit as to how they're going to put the data entry. But really it's a, it's a simple scientific process and there are now tools available that can enable surgeons without much effort to have really scientifically calculated nomograms and improve your outcomes, diminish your enhancement rates um, and, um, and obviously improve the overall standard of care. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to try and talk about um, is something which is very close to my heart, which is standardization. Um, and the fact that refractive surgery is now, you know, a good 30 years of eczema lasers in the, and, and now femtos creating refractive surgery in the cornea, and the fact that, you know, pretty much my generation is basically taught themselves, and so there's a little bit of a haphazard um, uh, way that people have trained and the standards are are, are a little bit um, loose and let's say that there aren't really uh, world standards um, in refractive surgery. Um, the World College of Refractive Surgery which formed, la which formed last year uh, now has many hundreds of members of fellow um, charter fellow members and I'm going to talk about the importance of developing a world standard and a world membership to define refractive surgery as a specialty not as a hobby, not as a sideline, uh, but something that will increase uh, public awareness in how wonderful this um, surgical procedure is and how safe it is and how safe it is compared to the alternatives, including contact lenses and even glasses. So I look forward to seeing you all there. And, um, and uh, not, last but not least, I hope that I will get a chance to bring my saxophone and play some great Bossa Nova with some of your amazing musicians.